We've spent some time importing and organizing media, so now it's time to create a project. And a project inside of Final Cut Pro is like a canvas for painters. It's where you're going to place your clips, you're gonna add titles, transitions, and you're actually building your final video. You're mixing all of these raw clips into an actual video that you can present, whether that be sharing it onto YouTube, maybe it's for your own personal collection, or you wanna send this out and have this available for purchase on places like iTunes and Amazon. That's all things that you'll be able to do with your project once it's completed. So before we actually create a project, just like we rearrange the interface for organizing, you can also rearrange it for creating the project. And for that, I just recommend returning to the default layout, which you can certainly go up to the window menu and go to workspaces to select your default workspace. But this is one of those shortcuts I really recommend learning, which is Command-0. Command-0 will return you to the default layout, which is what we see here. This default layer layout has a much smaller browser at the top left, our viewer is in the middle, the inspector is displayed, but most importantly at the bottom is going to be our timeline, which that's the actual project that we're creating. So how do you create a project? Well, you can use the shortcut Command N or go up to the File menu, go down to New and select Project. After creating a project, you are presented with this dialog that asks you a couple very important questions. So the first question is, what do you want the project to be named? And a mistake or maybe an oversight, but many editors that I see posting clips of their timeline and, and different things online, so they don't name their projects. And it's very important to create a naming structure for your projects. So whatever you do, don't call your project Untitled Project. Give it an actual name. So in this video, in these tutorials, I'm gonna be editing scene four from this overtime movie. So I'm gonna call this scenes four. You know, something as a little side note, some, some naming conventions, you can certainly put in a version number. Some people like to put V1.0, uh, because this is version one. And as you make little rever revisions, you might duplicate this project so that you have version one, but then you also have version two, or version 1.1. If you like to have multiple versions of your project, don't hesitate to create that and put that into the name. But in this case, I'm just gonna keep it as scene four. The next option here is what event do you want this project to be stored in? Just like all of your media had to be imported and stored in a specific event, projects are also attached to events. And the reason for this is you can actually drag a clip that's not stored in Final Cut, say it's on the desktop or somewhere else, you can actually drag those clips directly onto a project, onto your timeline. And when you do that, any clips that you have put to that project are also gonna be added to the event that that project is stored in. That might be a little confusing and it's not too important to, to understand at this point, but you do have to select an event and in our case, we only have one event in this overtime library, and that's the overtime event. So I can just select that one, and that looks perfect. The starting time code, we're gonna keep it all zeros at this point. However, if you're working collaboratively with many other editors or on a much larger project, you may have specific segments of your project. And like in this case, we're working only on scene four. So we might want the starting time code to be different than just all zeros, just for organization's sake. You can adjust that here if you want to. Uh, this Really the only effect this is gonna have is on the visuals in the timeline for your time code. Now below that, we see the video and audio and, and rendering settings down here. These are not something that you can change right now. It's set to the first video clip that you drop onto your timeline will set the properties of your project. So that's fine for most editors. If you don't have a specific goal in mind for where you want this project to go, you might just wanna keep these automatic settings. And again, that's fine, but we are gonna look at the custom settings. 
because if you do want to make changes to that, just click the Use Custom Settings. And when you do this, you get some options. And these options include what do you want the video settings to be, the rendering settings, and the audio settings. So what do these mean? Well, the video settings are the size of your video. If you look on YouTube and play a video, especially if it's an HD video, you will have an option to select the image quality. And by default, YouTube will set that automatically. But you as the viewer of the video can actually change the image quality to a different setting. And that's essentially what you're selecting here for your video properties. I usually recommend keeping it at the automatic settings because that will match whatever video clip you add to your project. It'll match the settings for your project based on that video. But if you know you want a specific screen size, you can go in here and select that. So as an example, a lot of people are using 1080p HD right now as the format that's being used. And the resolution is usually 1920 by 1080. But the frame rate is something a lot of people are messing with. They're changing this to get a specific look. As an example, this 23.98 or 24 frames per second gives you more of a film look, a professional film look. And it's just the way the video is perceived. If you're not familiar with how these different frame rates affect your video, I'd recommend taking a look at some videos online and comparing them. And you'll see kind of what the difference is. But just as an overview, as a general rule, the 23 or 24 frames per second gives you more of a film look. If you're working with 29.97 or 30 frames per second, that is kind of standard video look. It's more realistic looking. And then if you go up to the higher frame rates, like 60p, these are great for, for really high speed action that you're seeing in more frames per second. And the other difference to look at here is you also have 25 frames per second, 50 frames per second. That is more the PAL standard as opposed to NTSC. Uh, so that's going to be more the region that you're based in. If you're watching this in Europe, for example, you're probably going to be using the PAL setting, which will use either 25 frames per second or 50 frames. Um, so base, base these frame selections more on the video that you're working with in the region that you're in. Again, if all of this information seems very complicated, don't worry, it is, and that's why you have that option to use the automatic setting. It'll just set all that stuff for you based on the video you add to the project, the first clip that you add. Now, a couple things I wanna also point out here, we have our rendering settings. This is just what codec's gonna be used to render the video. Usually, Apple ProRes 422 is a very uh, standard one to use, but some people want a higher resolution, and you can do that with some of these other rendering options. We also have the color space. I mentioned this way early on when we created the library. We are doing this all in the standard Rec. 709 color space for these tutorials, but if you are working with HDR content or a different color space, you'll have that as an option to be able to select a different color space. And then below here, we have the audio settings. Uh, this project, we're going to work with stereo, which is just two channels, a left and a right channel of audio. And we're using the 48 kilohertz sample rate, which is a very standard sample rate for videos. Uh, however, you could select this and change this if you're going to work in surround sound, uh, or if you want to change the sample rate, you can do that here as well. Uh, however, those you know the reason for changing that, you have very specific equipment that you've recorded or your destination where you're going to actually be sharing this project is something uh, custom and very specific that you're going out to. And these are settings that, for the most part, I find most editors, especially if you're getting started, which is what this course is geared to, you won't really need to change those and, and go to those other formats. So again, I recommend using the automatic settings for most projects. Now with all of that said, I do wanna take a little sidebar and mention Instagram and some other social media platforms because a lot of you might be editing video that you're gonna be posting to Instagram uh, or some of these other platforms. But I, I call out Instagram specifically because if you've used Instagram at all, you know most of the posts tend to be square video 
And some of them, if you're thinking of Instagram stories or IGTV, you actually have vertical video. And if we look at these custom settings again, and I look at the video format, even for 1080p, and I click on resolution, all of these are pretty standard resolutions for widescreen or high definition, which is usually widescreen uh, format. So if you do want to create a video that is vertical or a square format, you can certainly do that. All you need to do is click on your format and select custom. When you select custom, you are then able to enter in any resolution that you want here. So right now for Instagram, the highest resolution that it accepts is a 1080 height. So that's the second number is your height. So if you wanted square video, you would just do 1080 by 1080. And that'll give you a square video that you can edit inside of Final Cut. Uh, if you're editing for IGTV, which is vertical video, you can actually do 1080 by 1920. And that'll give you the vertical canvas. And you can then select your frame rate. For most things that are going on to Instagram, I usually recommend 30p uh, as your project. And I wanted to just take a, a, a quick second to look at this. When you create this, what that does is notice our viewer here is now a vertical canvas, essentially. You have a vertical project that you're working with. So if I click and add at one of these clips down onto the timeline, you'll notice it resizes itself to fit into that vertical canvas. But we could certainly select this video, go into the video inspector, and I could select this and zoom in and go up to fill that entire vertical spot. We could then use the transform tool to move this around. But notice your canvas is vertical. So when you go to export this, if you're sharing this onto Instagram, you'll then have a vertical video. So I wanted to, to take a little sidebar to, to mention that. In almost all of this course, we're just going to be using a standard video because this is a custom um, way of going. But let me delete this project. I'm going to select it here in the event. Use uh, command delete to delete the project. I'm going to use command N to go back and create a project again. Again, this is going to be scene four. And in this case, I don't want to worry about these manual settings. I'm going to click back and use the automatic settings. And everything's going to be set then based on this first video clip that I add to the project. So I'll click on OK. And that's how you create a project inside of Final Cut Pro 10. You can certainly go into your browser and you'll see the project there. Uh, the scene four, you can click on the name and rename your project at any time. You can also select the project here in the browser and use the inspector on the right side to see the settings for this project. I haven't added a clip yet, so it's just using this 720p setting. But if I click on the modify button on the right side, I can actually go in here and customize these settings and make changes to it. Uh, one little asterisk to this, once the frame rate is set for a project, it can't be changed. So after you start adding clips to this project, the frame rate that it takes from that first clip you add is going to be at what it is. You won't be able to change this later on. So just keep that in mind. You can't change the frame rate later on. You just would have to create a new project and then copy and paste clips between them. Okay, so we have a project created. We've set up the settings. It's this blank timeline at the bottom. Now it's going to be time to start editing and adding clips to this project.